Today I'd like to do a quick update over my previous video on QNAP's hybrid backup sync program. They just released a new major update and I'd like to go over the changes. As you can see here they've actually renamed it to uh, hybrid backup sync 3 so they've released an entire updated version and it's considerably different in terms of visuals. Um, functionality is very similar but we'll go through it and so you can see kind of a, what it looks like. So let's go ahead and launch it. The first thing you notice is that the menuing here on the left is a little bit different. So let's go through each one. They've added a lot more wizards um, which is probably good I think for most of the time we none of us do create backup jobs that often so it's kind of nice to just have that extra little help a little bit we hopefully are backing up every day um, however it doesn't mean you're going to create backup sets every day so if we walk through a typical backup let's go ahead and do one here so I'm gonna just pick um, a particular folder here and we'll go next and this is where it's changed a little bit here um, they now have kind of everything on one page so you can kind of see you don't have to necessarily go through and make multiple selections you can kind of see right on one page what you're going to do so if you're going to go to a local NAS um, you would select obviously local NAS but if you're going to another NAS unit like what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and pick um, a remote NAS so as you can see I've, you know all I had to do to it put in the IP address hit the tech server and it's already connected it so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and hit create let's put the password in first So I'm typing the password in, I'm going to go ahead and hit create and it should connect up to my secondary NAS. Okay, so from this point I'm going to go ahead and hit select because it's already found the NAS that I'm looking for. I'm going to hit select and it's going to pull up destination folders that are available on the secondary NAS. So I'm just going to hit, um, uh, let's just put it here just for the, for this experiment. I'm going to go ahead and hit add and hit next because we're pretty much done here. I'm going to go ahead and just probably change the name here and I'll call it test backup, something creative. And here it gives you the stats, of course, of uh, how much, how many folders you're backing up, how many files you're backing up, and what the total storage requirement's going to be. So I'm going to hit next. And then here's where you set your scheduler. So um, right now I'm going to leave no schedule, but obviously if you're going to create a real job, you're going to schedule it so it runs automatically. And I'm going to hit next. And here we're going to skip the filter part, but you can filter out certain file types. And that's, um, that's really up to you. Um, for all practical purposes, I typically back up data folders, so I don't really filter anything. But you do have that option. And then down here there's a thing called QDDupe, which is sort of a new feature. And that's basically uh, a deduplication of files. Now, um, we'll offer some caution to you when you use that, because it does look for all the known parameters, but it can make mistakes. If you're dealing with, you know, uh, a lot of pictures and stuff like that, um, probably not an issue. But if you have uh, a lot of other type of documents, you might want to take a look and see how it works first. Um, I haven't had any issues with it, but I'm just uh, throwing out a warning there. And then there's a couple other options here. So we have policies that we can use. Um, this is the one that has the option here to not use a snapshot or use a snapshot. On this particular device, it's disabled because it's not uh, snapshots aren't enabled. But on some of the newer devices, or if you've created volumes, that will be optionally turned on or off by default. So you need to check that out. Um, if you're using snapshots, it's not a problem. If you're not using snapshots, it can cause errors. And then here are uh, some other options. I'm not going to go through every single one. These are very similar to that was on the original version. So I'm going to hit Next. 
and I am pretty much ready to go and create that job so it's it's completed so now basically I set up a one-way sync from one NAS to another NAS and it's right now not schedule scheduled to um, or it's not on any kind of schedule I should say and so it's really just gonna run when I want it to and again I, if you're gonna do this yourself you're just gonna put it on your schedule so that's pretty much it for that so I want to go back through a few other things so there also are some sync jobs as well so again I want to remind you what the difference between a sync and a backup is a backup is in a proprietary format where it creates one basic big file that you can attach to and then selectively restore Syncing is a little differently. Syncing really looks for changes and copies those changes over. And to me, from NAS to NAS, syncing is far better. I want to show you real quick some difference that's there. Again, these some of these choices were always on version 2 as well. They've just made it a little easier. So I'm going to pick a one-way sync job. And again, I get the same options here to uh, you know sync up. So I can either pick remote NAS so I'm going to pick remote now, select the one I've already had, hit select, and again it's created the job for me. So all I have to do here is select the folders. So let me just pick, um, I'll pick this folder, there's really nothing on it. And a destination folder. Same thing as before. So I've now created a one-way sync. So whatever changes I make to this NAS, will get filtered over to the other NAS. So I hope that makes sense. Hit next. Again, pick a schedule. Um, option, pick an optional schedule that you want. And I'm going to hit next. Now, again, I'm going to leave it with no schedule. And, and if you're creating a job for the first time, you have an option to do sync now. And again, that was there before. Hit next. Again, same filters. Uh, same basic policies and same basic options in terms of error handling. So I'm going to hit next. Here's my summary. So I'm going to hit create. And there I have it. I have a one-way sync that goes from well, first NAS to the second NAS uh, at the pre-described schedule. So again, this is all very similar functionally. It just puts it all on one screen, makes it easier for you to actually create the jobs. So here you have a summary of the jobs, so you can kind of see what's going on. And then over here you have a list of services, and those services are whatever has been turned on. So if you've got an rsync server turned on, it's going to give you the specifics on it. If you've got a real-time replication server, which this is disabled, you can um, also um, see the parameters on that or if you wanted to enable it this is where you would do it and then here this is sort of new um, it's been relocated to be part of this backup which is where you have a configuration for your USB one touch copy a lot of the units have a one touch button where you can insert a USB device um, to either read or import um, really useful for photographers that want to copy their SD cards so you can insert your SD card or you know insert your SD card in a USB um, device and bring that in so that's kinda how this works this is where you configure it you can do a smart import um, and then here you can configure the settings where you want it to go so on and so forth uh, you can do yeah, one touch copy or again you can configure what you want it to do where you want it to back up you need a lot, a lot of different configurations and then external so if you go to external all the connected devices are as storage devices so this really is a, a USB port configuration uh, I think most of the time people will use smart import or one touch copy that's probably more useful at least it is to me I can't speak for everybody and that's pretty much it so you have an option to do a lot of different things with this um, it's just a um, you know it's a it's a major visual overhaul but it's not a major overhaul in terms of functionality um, I did the upgrade on all my NAS units and I did have one particular problem and that's with um, um, jobs going 
from one NAS to another that were going from an encrypted volume to another encrypted volume, I was getting that the dreaded um, can't take a snapshot error message that was part of the um, earlier versions a long time ago um, before I reported it and they actually patched it. And now it seems like with version 3 it's back again. The workaround was to actually delete the jobs and recreate them and that seems to take care of the problem for me and it's been working flawlessly. But like with any other major upgrade sometimes things get lost and that's what's happened here. So anyway I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification icon so you'll be notified of uh, future content. And feel free to post any questions. I'll be glad to answer anything I can. Have a great day.